question was about uh, about chemistry. Yep. Um, I want to know whether chemistry is a good indication of meeting your soulmate, or whether it's an indication of you meeting somebody who has uh, matching childhood injuries. Mm. Good question. Good question. You don't have to stay up here for the answer. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> so I did it. <laughs> All right, let's look at chemistry. And um, most people assume that the soulmate connection means that there will be an instant sexual chemistry. And that is not true. The soulmate connection is not based on just sexual chemistry. The soulmate connection is based on lots and lots of different factors within the soul. If you have an instant sexual chemistry with somebody, it's possible that that person is your soulmate. But it's also possible that the person isn't your soulmate. And that's why it's important not to judge a soulmate connection on sexual chemistry. Let's look at what's happening in sexual chemistry. You've got the male, let's say in your case, you're, you're a heterosexual leanings in your soul, are you not? Yes. Okay. So you've got the male and the female. Remember I've talked about injuries at the different chakra locations. So you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven primary chakras. Remember the chakra locations are meridian points for the crossover of energy. Now, if we now translate all of that from the metaphysical to the soul-based explanation, the chakra points are areas where emotions flow out of you and into you. Does that make sense? So the major vortexes where emotions flow in, into you and out of you. So, of course, the male has the... In, and by the way, I'm drawing seven chakra points because that's what's traditionally thought of as, the, as having all of your chakras open is traditionally thought of as being the best possible um, state of being, if you like, in terms of here on Earth or even in the spirit world. The truth actually is when you're on the divine path, your chakras all change anyway. And once you enter in a one condition with God, um, you have more chakras than what you have if you don't uh, receive divine love. So the process of receiving divine love actually transforms the soul so much that the meridian points of energy also transform. But if we just take it from what we, what many of us have already learned about and understood, let's say there is seven, the seven chakra points. So we've got the same for our, for our lady. Three, four heart area, five throat area, six sort of third eye area, seven crown. Now, for every single person on earth, we all have different types of injuries, different types of emotional injuries. Now, remember these chakras, they open to various degrees and in various ways. And remember, they're not only on the front of you, they're also at the back, at the rear. Of you. So th these are the chakra energy points that flow all around you and create an envelope, if you like, around you. Now, these, these energy points are emotions. So what controls the chakras is emotions. So that's why you can go and lay on a table and get your chakras all cleared, and then a half an hour later, one or two of them or three of them be blocked again. And the reason why is because the emotion that's blocking that location in, in an energetic way the emotion blocking the location just causes that energy centre to close down or invert, it can invert as well. So some of these energy points will flow out under normal circumstances, but we have them flowing in. And remember, if you hold a pendulum over the top of these points, sometimes you have an anti-clockwise rotation rather than a clockwise rotation. And sometimes they get disturbances in them through the different emotions. And so you have you're, you'll have a pendulum doing figure eights or even figure all sorts of strange shapes over the top of the over the top of the chakra rather than running in a nice circular clockwise fashion. Now when they're running in a nice circular clockwise fashion, it means your spirit body is functioning the best it possible can function at that moment. 
it doesn't mean you're dealing with your emotions. And it doesn't mean that you don't have emotions to deal with. It just means in that moment, things are, things are flowing. As soon as you begin to deal with any emotion, certain chakras will close down, certain chakras will open up. The key in your own development is to not worry about that. Now, if you're on a natural love path, you worry about that all the time. And that's what a lot of spirits in the spirit world, on the natural love path, they're always looking at a person's chakras. No, that's blocked. We've got to clear that for you. No, that's blocked. No, we've got to clear that for you. Whereas on the divine love path, the focus is more along the lines of what emotion is causing that to block. What's the cause of this blockage that's happening within you? So bearing in mind that these chakras being open all will have causes associated with them as to why they're open or closed. And all of the causes are emotional. You follow me? Now that's a bit of a background. Now, let's say the male has certain emotional things shut down. For instance, let's say the male, right from the time he was born, was taught by his mother or his father or both that men are better than women. Now this is a common belief, right? But to, even on earth today in many of the uh, you know, Eastern, Eastern philosophies in Eastern countries and some of the third world countries, there is this common belief still that having the man, you know, being born a man is the best possible gender that you could be born. And being born a female is like a curse even, right? For many of them. And it's often, this often is engendered by both the male and the mother and the father. Both the father and the mother, the male and the, and the female parents are engendering this same emotion in the man. So um, there's a common, and I, and I don't mean to offend any Italians, but there's a common thing like an Italian mama always loves her sons, right? right? Always looks after her sons. And quite often, by the time they're 30, they're still expecting to go home and have a meal with mama anytime. She'll have it ready for her anytime they want, you know, that kind of thing. And that is a continuation of that injury. So let's say this male has that injury. He is not going to connect sexually to a woman who doesn't like that injury. Because he has this viewpoint that he's better than a woman. The only type of women that he's going to connect to is women who feel that they're worse than him. Does that make sense? Yeah. And so her sympathetic emotion will need to be. So, let, so let's say his chakra here, it'd be second chakra, opposite direction. Right? All to do with masculine worthiness. So he's, he's a he-man, right? <laughs> he's one of these alpha males, right? And she will have to feel the opposite in that chakra area. And what will happen is when that happens, energy will flow between them. Now, when energy flows, it also opens up different parts of your own energy system. And remember, we're not talking energy, we're talking emotion. Once the emotion starts flowing, that has the habit of opening up sexual desire. So actually, an injury-based an injury-based emotion can open up your sexual desire. Now, in her and him, he will be attracted to this woman. She has little self self worth as a woman. That she has this viewpoint that women are lesser than men. That I need this alpha male to make me feel powerful. I need this alpha male maybe for security or whatever, and he views himself, oh, I'm a powerful, you know, I'm the man, you know, and he has all those kind of feelings in him, and she will be sexually attracted to him. Doesn't matter what's happening in her head. In her head she might think, these kind of men are just, you know, they're not very nice. In her head she might think that, but she's going to be attracted to him sexually. So in her head she might want a nice man who's going to treat her nice and, you know, but in her emotion, she wants a bad boy, you know, that's the kind of emotion that's driving her. Now, that injury causes an unlocking of the energetic pathways in your spiritual body. And because of that, because of that, the, also the unlocking of the soul's emotional response. And now the soul is responding to having an attraction, which we now call chemistry. Right? I feel a certain chemistry with this person. Now, if it's only happening at one chakra level, then the chemistry is not strong. But it's if, it, if it's happening at two or three or four chakras, where the chemistry is very much matched with the type of emotions that are flowing between the two, now the chemistry is going to be 
almost overwhelming. And they might not be soulmates. Does that make sense to everyone? So just because a person is your soulmate, it doesn't mean that you're going to start off with perfect chemistry. And if a person starts off with perfect chemistry, it doesn't mean that that person is your soulmate. All it means is that right at this moment, the types of injuries that I have and the types of injuries that my partner has, happen, that I've got chemistry with, happen to be compatible with each other. Does that make sense? So when I first met Mary, Mary did not feel the chemistry towards me. Would you say that's pretty fair? It waxed and waned. So sometimes she felt something for me, other times she not. The thing that shut down any chemistry that we felt together was that Mary had did some deep fears soon after meeting me that started coming up. The major one was I was saying that I'm Jesus. Right? Trust me, that's not a not a good line. <laughs> <idea. laughs> and uh, and because I was in truth, of course, I had to say it. <laughs> but uh, you know that caused her to kick into some fear and anger. Now, fear and anger stop any type of sexual response. So if I'm in fear or in anger, and this will happen in all any of your sexual lives. If you find yourself closing down in your sexual response, it will usually be related to those two emotions, the capping emotion of fear and anger. So whenever Mary felt anger towards me or felt afraid of what I was saying, straight away there was no sexual response. There was no sexual chemistry. Now, of course, I'm not afraid of Mary. I'm pretty happy she's Mary Magdalene. Um, and I'm not afraid of her, so I didn't feel that. But I did feel the whole shutdown that Mary, Mary's had towards me at times. So there was one time, you don't mind me bringing this up, no. it's too late now. <laughs> <laughs> there was one time where I went out to dinner with Mary and she said, I have no attraction for you whatsoever. No physical attraction for you whatsoever. So I went home and cried most of the night in a motel room <laughs> after that. But, um, but that was my law of attraction, obviously, too. So I had to work through that emotion. But the reason why she was feeling that at that time was that she was very, very frightened about what being with me would mean. Right? And fear stops sexual attraction. So, so when you have chemistry with somebody, it can be very misleading. Very misleading. And this is why it's so important to actually start dealing with everything at the emotional level rather than and, and rather than assuming that this chemistry means we're soulmates. Right? And it's fine to enter relationships where you have chemistry, but it's very important to be aware that most chemistry at the beginning happens to be due to emotional injuries that are compatible and so strongly compatible with each other that this emotion of overwhelming emotion flows through you, which actually causes a rush of sexual energy to flow through you as well. So it opens up the sexual pathways as well in your soul, which then open up sexual pathways in your spirit body and your material body. So does that make sense what's going on there? So if you feel you have chemistry with somebody, that's fine, feel the chemistry, but understand that this chemistry can often be a deep emotional scars within yourself and them that are very compatible with each other. And this is why some people finish up marrying people intellectually that they feel are going to be a good husband or a good wife, but there is no sexual chemistry. And, and quite often we're looking for things at an intellectual level with our relationships rather than an emotional level with our relationships. Conversely, sometimes we, we have people who are always looking at things from an emotional level and so their sexual chemistry with their partner waxes and wanes within the space of a day or a week or a month. And so they really feel into the person within the first few weeks. Two weeks later, the emotions being worked through by one of them no longer feel attracted. And so they feel, oh, I don't, I'm not attracted to you anymore, I don't know why, but I've got to move on. And off they go to another person. Does that make sense? 
And this is why things change so rapidly, is because that's our emotions that have control of those things. Right? And it's our emotional injuries generally that have control of those things. 